Welcome to the Speak With People podcast, where we believe that healthy communication is the key to unlocking your leadership potential. We are the go-to resource for leaders looking to greatly improve their communication skills. Whether it's one-on-one interactions, team settings, public speaking, or your digital communication. By improving these skills, leaders can create stronger connections and drive positive change within their organization. Each and every episode, we sit down with leaders from various fields, just like you're grabbing a cup of coffee with them. We dive into real, practical conversations. Our goal is to help you transform your communication skills so you can lead more effectively, build stronger relationships, and make a lasting impact. So grab your favorite drink, settle in, and let's learn together. Well, how do you communicate in high stakes leadership situations? As you continue on with your company or your business and the stakes get higher and higher, do you let nervousness take over? Do you let a rise of anxiousness uh, fill your communication? Do you back away from those communication opportunities and crumble under the pressure? Oh my goodness, we're gonna talk about all of this in today's Speak With People podcast episode. I am joined by someone who should have been on the podcast long ago, uh, and I'm so glad that we're able to finally make this happen. His name is Dennis Neal. He has been a longtime friend. We'll talk so much more about that uh, in the podcast um, conversation itself, but he has been an executive leader for many years. Oh my goodness, I don't even know where to start. He's, He's a race car driver, and uh, he's a great friend and he's a co-founder, business partner of Speak With People. Speak With People would not exist without Dennis's vision, without his investment, without his wisdom. And so I'm just so excited. Dennis, welcome to the Speak With People podcast. Thanks, Jason. It's a pleasure to be on. And uh, yeah, it's been a little bit since you started the podcast and I've avoided it for this long, but I guess <laughs> it's finally time to throw in and go to the podcast. See, I love it. I love it. This is great. This will get us warmed up for when you know, as we dream about the future, as we're able to, you know, get to speak with people, mastermind and those kind of things as we're pouring in the business leaders. So this will be, this will be great. Well, uh, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit more about your story? I could tell some really fun chapters of it, but I'd rather it come from you, who you are, what you do, what's kind of got you to this place. Yeah. So I'm, I'm many things. Uh, that's, that's probably the, the fun part. I think we all are many things. Uh, so for me, I've, uh, I'm a business executive. I've been in the industry for uh, 22 years, I guess now, wow. uh, which is awesome. I've got a lot of experience in different roles. I worked my way up through the ranks, which was a lot of fun, uh, sometimes stressful, uh, and had a lot of different experiences. You talked about race car driving. I've been racing something since I was 10 years old, <laughs> uh, and so and I still do that today. Uh, and so I've had a lot of opportunities there. I ended up on a uh, you know, a uh, reality TV show of all the things I never <laughs> expected in my life that I would end up doing. Reality TV was not one of them. I ended up doing that. Uh, so that was a lot of, a lot of fun, very different experience than what I've had in the past doing different things. Um, I, I'm a CPR and first aid instructor. Uh, that was how I got through college was doing clothing retail and helping my mom out with her CPR business. And so uh, I've done that for a number of years. Uh, and then, you know, You've got the family side of I'm a a husband and a father of a little guy who just turned 10 recently. And so he's he's having a blast and we're doing all the different sports things and and all that fun. And, you know, they start to get their own personalities and you you get to constantly change and flex with that. So, yeah, that's and then I guess, you know, we found and help found speak with people. Uh, I don't know if you want to tell that story if you want me to. I can tell my side of it. I would love that. (laughs) Yeah, go for it. Let's do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know you had a vision. You had a vision for what you could do uh, for helping leaders and growing growing leaders in their communication. It was definitely something that I've seen over my career where communication skills are extremely challenging for people. Uh, and I think you've seen it too. And so I'm actually at a racetrack and we, we're in a, a thunderstorm delay. So there's lightning, we can't go play. So we're sitting there underneath this big awning at, outside of a trailer. It's pouring rain in Atlanta, you know, middle of summer, uh, it's hot, it's rainy. And we're sitting there having a conversation on the phone about dreaming this dream up while I'm in a, you know, fire suit in the middle of a thunderstorm. Uh, and we're talking through it. And, you know, that was kind of the the spark that started uh, speak with people. We was walking through your, your dream of what it could be. And then, you know, with my experience of living in the 
you know, day-to-day -day business world where, yeah, people can't communicate. Uh, and communication is the cause of most problems on any one of our, our programs or anything that we're trying to do. Yep. You can usually trace it back to someone didn't communicate correctly. Yep. And and so, yeah, that, that thunderstorm and phone call was kind of how it all kicked off. <laughs> I love it. it and, you me. know, you talk about communication. You know, they can't communicate correctly. I think so often leaders just assume, you know, well, it's just my public speaking that I need to work on. And the reality is, is they're talking with their boss. They're talking with the, their employees. You know, all of that communication, if, if they can't do that in a, a, a well-connected way, it just falls apart. And so yeah. that's why I just love what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, we, we communicate every day. Uh, it is the one thing that you do. And as a, as a leader, you think people hear exactly what you hear in your head when you say it. And that is not the case. <laughs> right. <laughs> Boy, that's absolutely huge. Yeah, I, I go back to that summer a couple, yeah, a couple summers ago. And I'm, I'm driving around Tampa area. You know, we're connecting on the phone. And I do want to say for our listeners, when Dennis says he races cars, this is not like a go-kart track where you're doing like 25 miles an hour. <laughs> this is... I mean, you're going, I mean, what's your top speed? It depends on the track, but like 130, 140. Jeez. <laughs> so, you know, just, just a little bit, you know, having to deal with those, those turns and all of that kind of stuff. But, you know, we're just, you know, sort of dreaming this thing through. And, <clears throat> uh, you know, a few years before that, I've been kind of coaching some pastors and leaders online and was like, okay, maybe there's something here. And then you just sort of poured vision on, you know, some ideas and you're like, well, what if we, what if we, what if we, and those, what if we, you know, uh, phrases, you know, really took root. And I think two years into it for any other business owners, entrepreneurs, teams listening, you know, I was sort of hoping things would happen <laughs> overnight <laughs> very quickly. And you, you kind of helped keep me paced, you know, like, Hey, we're, you know, this is going to be a, there's going to be a climb. And I think at the two year mark now, we're really starting to kind of come into our own. We've niched down, we're finding some good spots and you've been a guide for that entire way to kind of get us here. So thank you. I mean, I don't say thank you enough. Uh, I mean, you and Caitlin have been absolutely huge. And so it's been, it's been exciting now. We just, we, we just yesterday sent some SOWs or SOWs for two new banks. So now I think we're up to like 10 different banks, uh, half a dozen of them, Fortune 500, you know, that we've worked with. And so just, just amazing. Yeah. And I think that's a, I mean, not to get too deep too early yeah. in this, but that's one of the lessons learned of just any dream is be flexible in it. I mean, I, if you would have asked me two years ago, oh, let's go target the banks and, and that where the communication skills would yes. be the, where they would be the most hungry for it. That's not where I would have started. And yep. yet it is where we are. Uh, yep. and, and so be flexible with your business, be flexible with where you're wanted to go, watch the industry, see where people are pulling. Cause if you're just pushing your product, it, that gets tiring and, and you really want to find someone that's going to, you're going to push and they're going to pull. And, it, and that partnership is what you're looking for. So go wow. find that wherever it is and be flexible. Cause it'll, sometimes it pops up in places you don't really realize. I, I would say, you know, We've been flexible. We talked through it. Uh, you know, sometimes I'm sitting here and you're you're dreaming a big dream, and I'm like, "All right, Jason, we gotta we gotta make that manageable." And then other times you're pushing me, like, "Hey, Dennis, I think we can go do this." And I'm like, "Hey, you're passionate about it. Let's go try and see what happens." Yep. Uh, and take that learning. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So speaking of though, you know, our kind of conversation today with you know how do you communicate in some of these high stake situations? You know, your career, you've had you know, quite a few of them. Is there a moment that, you know, kind of sticks out to you where, you know, that kind of high stake communication was critical and I mean, you just, you had to, you had to walk in, you had to walk into it. What did you learn from it? You know, how did you kind of walk through all of that stuff? Yeah. So I, I've, I've spoken in front of 600 people. I've been up on stage. Uh, we did that at a conference with you, we, you know, early on, we did our, our speakers conference I've been in small rooms where we're having a tough conversation with a, a small group of people and having to, to have those hard conversations. I'm going to make it really real for everybody here. You've probably all interviewed at some point. What is more high stakes to you in your life than going in and walking into an interview? You don't know what they're going to ask. You don't know what they're looking for all the time. 
you have a description of a job and you have a resume of who you are and you're trying to sell either over the course of an hour or course of a day and, and you're trying to sell yourself that I can do all these things and you want me, you know, what could be more high stakes than that? Uh, you know, and you want that to be successful. Wow. So, you know, I, I figured I'd just make it real. Like everybody's been in an interview, you know, communication is critical in that. It's a very short period of time for them to get to know you. It's a very short period of time for you to convey who you are. And for me, the biggest thing that you would do is you prep. Mm. So prepare yourself for what do you want to say? You know, we talk a lot about uh, in some of the communication stuff that I've done at my, at, with speak with people and at my job is, you know, come in prepared into the room. You know, so if you can see the room ahead of time, that's amazing. You know, I was uh, having a talk uh, just recently and it was 300 people in a room. I, I looked in the room before I spoke there. I went up to the front and looked at the room from that perspective rather than just standing in the back of the room and go, okay, there's all these chairs. Uh, you know, so I went up to the front, looked from the stage and looked back at the room. So that way, when I got up on stage, it wasn't the first time that I saw it. Always practice your opening. Same thing in an interview. Practice that opening. What are you going to, how are you going to describe yourself? Most interviews allow you right up front, hey, why do you think you're a good fit for this job and why yep. were you interested? That yep. is pretty much how an interview always opens. You prepare that. Have that script. You know, some people love to write it out. I'm more of a bullet person, so I put bullets down of what I'm going to talk about and, and just practice that first two or three sentences at the very least. So that way you can say it and it will calm you down. Uh, Caitlin, I wrote a blog post a, a long time ago, three, two, one, of just, you know, things you hear, things you can uh, see, things you can uh, smell just to get your senses under control, to control, you know, get, take that body that's going out of control, that's in the flight or flight mode. And just calm it down, get back recentered, and be, you know, breathing exercises. People love to do those. You know, whatever works for you, try different things and see what calms you down. But, you know, having that scripted first couple of lines that you're going to say so you can flow into it so you don't have to think about it anymore. So good. It yeah. Flow in, you know. So, and, and those steps work from an interview where maybe you're one on one or one on a, you're know, going to a panel interview. And it also works when you're the person up in front of a couple hundred people, or maybe you're just in front of your team of 15 or 20. If you get nervous in front of your team, think about how you're going to open it. Maybe you're running a staff meeting and you're, you're trying to convey something that's coming down from higher up in the company. Yep. What is it that you want to talk about? Throw some bullets on the slide to help you, you know, use, use the different crutches around you uh, to be able to, to calm you down and just be in that moment be able to deal with the uncertainties because you're going to, there's going to be uncertainties anytime you get in front of a, a large group of people or a small group of people, you know, we've all gone to this virtual world. How many times do we sit here and say, can you see my slides? No, I can't see your slides. What is going on? Why doesn't this work? You know, be ready for those right. moments. Uh, be ready when your slides just stop working. Sometimes I think you experienced that recently yep. where the slides just stopped. It's like, okay, uh, let's go to the backup plan. <laughs> Yep. So have those backup plans and just kind of roll with it. It happens. People yep. are used to it at this point and, you know, just be comfortable enough in the moment that you can deal with those situations. Oh, boy, that's so good. You, you, you hit on such an important part too in the preparation. And I think so often I, I talk to leaders who are just, you know, because again, like we talked about in the beginning, we communicate so much that we sometimes under prepare and you read stories or you listen to interviews of, of some of the best athletes out there or, you know, some of the, the most incredible speakers or pitch people or I mean, they're preparing like crazy. And so even if, if you're a listener and even if it's, you know, you're, you're going into your boss and you're pitching, hey, something's not working in our systems, I'm bringing a solution. You can't, you just cannot prepare enough for that. I mean, that's just so huge. How have you, you know, cause, uh, I mean, you've dealt with some meetings that are, you know, pretty, pretty important, lots of zeros involved, you know, how have you, you know, mentally, emotionally kind of gotten to a place where, you know, as you walked into those meetings, you know, you've kept your composure, you've you know, kept ready. I know part of that's preparation, but didn't know if there's, you know, any, 
anything else you'd add to that, especially with kind of keeping your emotions and your your mental your mental thoughts straight? Uh, I mean, I think it's stay confident in yourself. Ooh. If you're being asked to do this, or yeah. if you think that this is something that should be done, you're probably the best person to do this. So be confident in that. Don't don't sit here and we're oh well maybe they'll ask me something I don't know. That happens. It happens all the time. It, tell, say what you do know. Take you know, if you're in a work meeting, take an action. Like so many times, I have to teach some of my uh, younger uh, program managers take the action. And and I, I I'm I'm mean. I I sometimes will take them down a, a rabbit hole, and I'll just say, okay, I'll just keep asking them questions because I know they don't know. Yep. I can tell they don't know, yep. but I'm going to see how far will they go before they just stop. And <laughs> it's funny to watch their boss, their direct boss, will be like. Stop, stop talking, stop talking. It's like, <laughs> and it's just, it's like, and, but that's a learning moment for them is, is, hey, you know, sometimes you don't know, take the action and get back to somebody. And then that follow up is a part of your character and be able to show that, hey, I'm, I'm willing to say when I don't know something. So I, when someone tells me they don't know something, I trust what they say more Oof. because they're willing to tell me when they don't know. Wow. And so, People get into the spot of, I have to know everything. Yeah, you need to know a lot. You need to be able to go to that first level of question with, you know, with the audience or the leader that you're working with. But you don't have to know every nitty gritty detail. Yep. If, if you're bringing your team to, if it's, a, if it's a work meeting and you're bringing your team, rely on your team. That's why they're there with you. You know, maybe you have an engineer or a business person that knows that detail. Call them in the meeting. Hey, you know, I think it's this, but hey, Joe, what do you think? You know, what what have you seen? Bring them into the conversation. So many times we as leaders forget that we have a team that's making us the the strong leader that we are. Use them. You know, if they're if you're if it's one of these big presentations and you're just kind of up there in the front, just have that confidence that you know what you're talking about, and you will get some crazy questions. I've I've sat on some panels and done some things and people like they you know it's question time and they get on a soapbox and they're just here to tell you about something and you know that happens and yep. sometimes you just got to have that that confidence in yourself that i don't need to engage in you know whatever's happening right here i i can do hey that's a great you know you have a great point let's follow up afterwards you know and and that way you don't have to do it in front of the entire you know room of people that you're in uh, so you know, I would say just be confident in yourself. If you're the one that's being asked to do this or you feel that you can do this, you probably can. Take wow. coaching from people. Uh, you know, this is a whole other topic, but have a mentor, have a coach, have have a business partner that's willing to bounce ideas with you. Uh, you know, don't do it alone. Uh, we're always stronger when it's not just hard ideas on paper that we're trying to uh, work through. If we can use that, you know, some of the preparation, you know, we talked about prep. Maybe you prep in front of in front of a couple people. Yeah. Uh, if you're getting ready for an interview, that's a good thing of, you know, especially if you're a large company and you're getting ready for an interview, go ahead and do a mock interview. Grab a couple of people that are at that level that you're trying to get to and just have them go ask you questions. Uh, typically, big companies, they have a kind of a canned set of questions or at least kind of topics that they like to ask, you know, or sometimes you can even find out, Hey, this leader always asks this question. I have a couple of questions that I always ask people uh, just because I, it, I think it shows a lot of their character, you know, go see if you can find those out and, and then prep with somebody, you know, mm. go through it ahead of time. So, I mean, that was a lot of points. I don't know what you like huh. and what you don't with that one, Jason. But. That was great. No, no, it was awesome. I was just thinking about just even, you know, last Tuesday night on our Tuesday night call, you know, I'm I'm dealing with a situation with one of the companies we work with and just, you know, you and I kind of going back and forth trying to figure out, you know, the right solution, the right way to communicate with them, uh, you know, so even being able to have that voice, you know, being able to do that is just so, I mean, it's just so huge. So for our listeners, who is that voice for you? You know, do you have that trusted voice? Because I think it's just, it's just so incredible to be able to bounce yeah. those ideas off and just, you know, feel that unity to be able to go, okay, this is what we're going to, we're you know, this is the direction we're going. So, yeah. I mean, so often in life, we're not doing things alone. We're doing it with other people and, and doing it with teams. And you're always looking 
you know, for people to, to help strengthen, even if you're, let's say you're a business owner and you're the only person in your business, you can still go find people that will go help you, that will bounce ideas off of you, that maybe have worked with the company that you're trying to work with. Maybe they have experience with invoicing with that company and they'll go, oh yeah, they always take forever to pay. Here's how I had success in getting, right. like, go, go find those, those people, you know. There's always someone else that's probably going through something similar or has gone through it in the past. And you just gotta, you just gotta be willing to go have those conversations with people and find them. Boy, I love that. You know, kind of switching the corners for a second because you, you oversee and have overseen staff for a long time. You know, we have people listening who are, you know, first time overseeing a staff, you know, listen, you know, helping, helping those kind of things. So even stepping into that coach role when now your team now has to go do the presentation or has to go be interviewed or do the interview or, you know, is called out in a meeting. What are some tactics? What are some, you know, skills that you found successful, you know, as someone who's overseen staff to, you know, continually speak into them to help them develop? I know we've covered a couple throughout, but that just kind of registered, you know, thinking through your experience. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I do when my team's talking and I'm sitting in the audience is I start taking notes. And I don't take notes about what they're actually talking about. I'm taking notes about their presentation. And, you know, do they have a, a you know, do they say, um, a thousand times? Do they have distracting body language? Is something about what, how they're dressed? You know, is there things about how they use the slides, how they look at the audience? Like, I'm just looking for all those things to try to coach my team to help make them better. You know, when they, and, and you want to give them good points and you want to give them areas they can grow and you want to find the right time to give them that information. And you have to know the person then, you know, I, I've given a lot of feedback to a lot of people and I haven't always done it right. I, I actually remember one time I was working with you and I gave you feedback when you weren't ready for it and that didn't work. You know, you had just come off the stage and I'm like, you're like, Oh, I think that was great. And I'm like, I think that was bad. I don't, I don't think you landed it right. And here's why. And I'm like sitting yep. here like ready to prove my point. And you're like, what? And, and it just wasn't the right time to have the conversation. We had the conversation the next morning yeah. and it was, that was the right time to have the conversation when everybody had come down off the moment, you know, adrenaline has gone away and you can sure. actually have that conversation of, Hey, here's what worked. Here's what didn't. We need to have those conversations to get better, but we need to do it in a way that people are going to be receptive to it. So figure out what your team needs. A lot of my team, I just shoot them an email. They, and they're so appreciative that I would even spend the time to give them that email that, you know, I can, I usually send it that night. So that way it's not right off the, right after they get off the front of the room and they sit back down at their laptop in the middle of the audience and they get an email from Dennis that says, Oh, you did all these things wrong. You know, that's, I, I don't do that. <laughs> so I usually try to take the notes and yep. I send it to them either the, the, that night or the next morning. Cause I want it to be fresh. I want it to be yep. close to the time so they can remember what they did and so they can good. take my feedback and be able to connect it. But you have to find that right time for that right person. Sometimes, you know, if the error was so bad, maybe you do need to correct it yep. right away. Yep. And, and maybe, you know, and I've had situations where, you know, I go back to like, hey, take the action. Sometimes it's my team that I will step in in the middle of the meeting. And I'm like, you know what? You know, Frank, that was a great point. I'm going to have Joe go look at that for you because I think he's not ready to answer that. And, and we really should have an answer for you. And I'll step in and just stop the conversation. Wow. So that way, yeah, you know, to protect my team. They yep. might not like that I just did that, but you're the one sitting outside of it. And so you can see things that they can't see while they're presenting. So sometimes yep. you need to do that. It it shouldn't be very often. I, I've also seen leaders where they will say, Well, what I wish Susie would have said was, and that's just terrible. Like not only did you just take your leader and just demoralize them, yep. but you also in front of the audience that they were speaking to, you basically said they told you the wrong thing. Threw them under the bus. You know what I wanted. And you, you don't want to do that. So, mm. you, you know, you need to build up the person. You know, if you're looking for them to talk about a particular topic to your audience because you think it's important, either you step in, oh, hey, Susie, those are some great points. And here's another thing that we do. Like, add on to it. Be additive to their conversation. Or, hey, Susie, those are great what can you tell us a little more about this? And so yep. that way you lead them to that conversation rather Oof. than saying things, you know, these, these backhanded things of, 
oh, I wish they would have talked about, or what they really meant to say was, and how right. many times do we see leaders do that? What they really meant to tell you was this. And I'm like, if they really meant to tell me that, they probably would have told me that. Oof. Maybe you wanted them right. to tell me that, and they don't agree with you. So now I'm trying to figure out who's telling me the truth. You know, if I'm your customer that's sitting here in front of you, I'm trying to figure out who do I trust in this situation. And and that's not ever where you want to put your customer or your clients into is a situation where they're trying to figure out, well, who in this company can I trust? Because that's the, the voice I want to listen to. And now they're trying, they're not listening to what you're saying. They're trying to figure out who's, who's right. Yeah. So yeah, you got to find the right way to give those uh, pieces of feedback. You got to protect your team, especially when you give them something new, try to build them up. I always have my teams uh, try to start small and a couple of times we've we've taken a risk and sometimes it pays off and sometimes it doesn't. We'll have some of our younger leaders go up in front of a big room and we prep them uh, ahead of time. We make them give their talk to us, uh, but they get up there and it's a different situation. And sometimes they get super nervous and we just need to help walk them through what they're they're talking about. And you know we want to build them up, so we we want to yep. make sure that they're ready to be in that audience that they're going into uh, by the time we put them there. If they're not Absolutely. ready, all we do is just make it like the client or the customer look at them and go, well, I'm not really confident in them. So, right. you know, that first right. impression is really important uh, right. for your client to, to have. Because there are some good moments I found, especially as a leader leading people to kind of push them out of the nest a little bit, you know, maybe moments they weren't expected for that you got to stand up and lead. But, you know, giving a high stakes presentation you know, trying to do a new pitch, you know, to a company. Those are not those moments. To just Yeah. You know. no, it, it, and we all grow more or more a little bit uncomfortable. Yes. So let's yes. get out of our comfort zones. Let's lean into that discomfort a little bit and learn how to deal with it. And yeah, you don't want to take the person that's never spoken in front of 10 people right. and say, hey, we got this new product and you're going to pitch it <laughs> to a thousand people in this auditorium that you've never been in. Yep. That, that's a terrible idea. Terrible. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. Public, uh, public humiliation really doesn't do much to build trust. Uh, and yeah. you're so right. Those little backhanded comments, Ooh, they're just like little daggers. They're like, Oh, did they really have to say, Oh, did they have to say that? It's just yeah, and then you, what you've done is the person's now still in front of the room. Right. And now their, their confidence is just shattered. Yeah. I made my, I disappointed my boss. Yeah. I didn't give them what they asked for. And so now I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm demoralized. And now I've got to go talk about whatever you told me I need to talk about. Like, oh man, like I screwed up big time. And, yeah. and that's just not where you want them. You want to prop them up. Even if they're struggling, prop them up, you know, prop them up or take them off <laughs> one yeah. or the other. Cause it, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to have a strong person up there. And, and if you're going to take them off, realize what you're doing there is you basically just said, this person can't talk to you anymore. Yeah. And so that's, a big deal. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, and I love, I love the, you know, example you used about us uh, because, you know, I, I, if, if I could replay it, I would have loved to re respond differently. You know, I didn't respond in a way that's like, you know, I mean, we weren't like going at each other or anything like that, but it was, you know, I wish that I would have went, Oh yeah, no, I see that. Uh, okay. Let me make the quick adjustment for the next one. Uh, but yeah, it was just, and we were hosting our own conference. It was all of our own content. It was like getting off the stage and I didn't even realize I had gone like 52 minutes, you know, I'm like, what, like, what just happened? Like, you know, pull the guy off for Pete's sakes. <laughs> well, and, and those are the things like, and I'm hosting. So I'm the guy who's trying to keep us on yeah. time, keep us moving around. And I'm stressing because of different things. It wasn't the right, I wasn't in a good spot to be able to go have that conversation. Cause I'm like, I'm kind of mad. Yeah. That's not the time to go give feedback is when I'm mad, I need to calm down. So yeah. I needed to step away too. And I didn't realize that. And you know what? That's going to happen. We oh, are yeah. all people and we are going to get in those situations. And so you have to realize when that happens and go mend the relationship and then have the conversation about yeah. growing. And, and yeah. that's what we had to do. I mean, that was, yeah. you know, we, we worked on the relationship that evening and then met in the morning where we could actually, like, we all got a good night's sleep. Well, kind of a good night's sleep. When you're hosting a conference, you're never going to have a great night's right. sleep. <laughs> we slept a couple of hours. And then, you know, we were able to kind of come at it and, and with the idea of, hey, 
we're setting up the morning. We're prepping for what we're going to yeah. do. What do we yeah. need to take away from yesterday that we can make better today? And we had the right mindset at that point. Yeah. Well, and you and I have uh, quite a history. I mean, quite a history. I mean, we go back a long time. So, you know, I love when people meet me, you know, brand new. They don't, you know, they're like, oh, Jason, everyone loves Jason. And then, you know, you get to know me. You you know me for a long time. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you're like everybody, he's got highs, lows, he struggles with this. Like we both have that history yeah. with each other. So being able to hear each other, you know, that's well, really, I think that's, that's, you, you make a really good point there. So if you're going to give feedback to people, there probably needs to be some sort of relationship already there. Mm. If you really want your feedback to be taken, mm -hmm. you know, because, because how do I trust the feedback? Because if I don't know you, uh, if if you're like the CEO of the company and you tell me, hey, Dennis, that was really good, but and you should add this to it. Okay, great. I will because I trust yep. you because of where you're at in the, in the company. Yep. If you're just some person that just took over a team and you're trying to give them feedback, you need to build a relationship with them yes. first and, and explain the why behind what you're seeing and how – and and. I always hate this statement of what's in it for me, but give them a what's in it for them. Like, why yeah. should they do this? What's it yeah. going to do for them? Here's yep. this new person that I don't know that's telling me how to do things. And the other statement I always hate is, I've always done it this way. Well, then, you know, we should always question things when we've always done it that way. But, you know, so it's like you got to have that relationship to be able to have the person actually take the feedback that you're trying to give. Absolutely. I love that. And, you know, as I've coached speakers before, one of the most fascinating thing about speaking up in front, especially if you get into a regular pattern of, say, you know, these high stakes situations, you're, you're, you're doing a big pitch here. I mean, contracts are on the line, you know, continued partnerships on the line, or maybe you're speaking at a regional conference or a conference and, you know, 100 people, 200 people, the, the people who will come up to you right away because there will be people you don't know and they'll want to give you feedback right away. Uh, the percentage of them ever doing what you just did is just really, really low because not many people are going to step into those leadership positions and actually be able to experience it. So I, I found sometimes as I'm receiving feedback from other people, I, yeah, I'll take the criticism. I'll take their critique, tell me the feedback, but I do have to, I do have to in kind of for my own mental state kind of put not that I put them in categories, but it's like, okay, you will never ever speak in front of a thousand people. Yes, I'm gonna listen to your advice. But when somebody comes to me who does this regularly, ooh, I'm gonna, you know, really for sure do that. So you you, you know, you've gotta you gotta be able to kind of, you know, think about it. And sometimes with those people who you don't know at all and they just wanna like <laughs> coach you and critique you right away, you know. Uh, there's a saying in the South that's, you know, bless your heart. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's yeah. just huge. Uh, that's just huge. Yeah. But, like I think for the leader listening, who's looking for more of those opportunities, I think you, you nailed something there. Like we've got to push ourselves. Like, are you putting yourself in a position to show your boss or your leadership team you're ready? Are you looking for opportunities to do that? You know, because if, if, if you're not, all of us just want the phone to ring and the door to knock and someone to say, but how often do those situations really happen? You know, we got to push That's ourselves. That's the rare thing. But the, you're not going to find that very often. Right, right. And we have found that, like, you know, as we've kind of navigated speaking with people, you know, we began thinking, okay, we'll be more B2C. We, we want to drill into helping, you know, speakers, leaders become, you know, stronger in their upfront communication skills. And as we just kind of kept marching down the road, you know, we had this conversation with a, a leader who said, hey, I'm, you know, my main clients are banks. And could you put together a training, you know, for one of their calls? And OK, let's try it, you know. And then that opened up another door and another door. And it's, it's just. <laughs> yeah. But neither one of us would have imagined what would have happened. Yeah. And I, I you know we're talking about high stakes things here and it, you really got to look at every engagement that way, you know, cause you don't know all the time where these things are going to play out. And so that next engagement with someone that's just kind of doing a fact finding, you know, that maybe just, you, you know, you did a cold call, you sent a cold email and they're like, Hey, I'd like to know more. That might be the high stakes moment 
that you don't know that you're having. Yeah. So treat all of those engagements with the same preparation and the same thing that you would do if you're standing in front of a thousand people so because good. you don't know who is on the other side all the time. And that person might be the next big advocate for your company. Yep. And you want to engage them just the way you would an audience of a thousand people. Wow. Uh, I was thinking about, you know, stress and it, it seems to be when maybe we have kind of a planned high stake conversation or presentation or something. It seems, to, it seems off more often than not, sometimes the stress gets accelerated and, you know, maybe in your personal life, some things fall apart. Like you get a flat tire or, you know, this happens and it makes you a little bit later than you seem, or, you know, your travel gets messed up on the road and now you've got to navigate, you know, those kind of things. How have you figured out how to, in your own personal stress load, manage that stress when those moments come? Has there ever been a moment where it's just hit such a high level that you're like, okay, I got to figure out how to, how to deal with this before I step into, you know, this presentation or conversation or whatever it is. Yeah. So, I mean, for, for better or for worse, I'm great at compartmentalizing mm. when I'm, when I'm doing something. I mean, that was the blog post I wrote about being all in mm -hmm. wherever I am. I'm all in, in that moment. And that's, that's great. Uh, it's also terrible because uh, you have to deal with the fact that if I'm at work, I'm all in at work. If I'm on work travel, that's what I'm doing. I'll work 14 hours in a day uh, and just be down and in the whole time because I want to go get this done. And then, you know, my wife's like, hi, remember me? Uh, so you know, yep. there's that. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> you got to, but I mean, that's kind of how I, I've done it. I'm like some of the times and, you know, if the house is dirty and that's what's distracting you can you afford to get someone to come clean it so that way it's one less thing that's sitting on there if that's what's stressing you out like what can you what else can you do yeah you know is, is there can you can you throw some time at it where like hey if i spend four hours just doing this this stressor goes away then go do that take the time out of the day make it happen make it go away if you can put some money against something that makes it go away you know if you can go get a friend to help you with something to make it go away, like you've got to understand how it's affecting you. So I would say, you know, take a step back and realize what is starting to impact your day to day. You know, if you're getting in front of customers and you're trying to deal with things, you know, maybe you got to create some more space uh, pre-meeting and post-meeting. So that way you can get yourself prepared as you go in and go out. You know, maybe sometimes you just walk right in, but hey, you know what, right now there's a lot of things going on at home. There's a lot of things going on in the business. I'm a little stressed. I need 15 minutes prior to walking in with a client. So I need to go create that space in my calendar. Uh, you know, I'll, I've had a couple of stories of, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go with the, my kid swallowed a screw story. Uh, so I'm, I'm uh, working in some different places and I'm, I'm in some meetings and I don't have any of my phones because I'm where I'm working. And I'm 100% I'm focused in on what I'm doing. I come out of that meeting to a voicemail, a text message on my personal phone, a voicemail, a text message on my work phone, and people looking for me. And I'm still hosting and still having to go to the next place. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, all of my things are blowing up. Well, my wife is with our then, like, I think he was two or something, <laughs> two year old son in the emergency room. He had swallowed a screw. Don't know how he got to the screw, but my wife was changing him and he somehow got a screw and he swallowed it. And I'm like, where are you? And so I'm on the, I'm like having to go deal with this while dealing with my other things at work that I'm doing. I'm like, you know, I'm having to manage that. And eventually I just had to leave. Like I had to leave. I had to figure out how to leave. Yep. So that took a minute because I had to work through the situation. I'm like, okay, well I need, and I had to, I had to tell my wife, I'm like, I can't be there right this second. And I know you want me there. I need 20 minutes. I will figure this out. And then I got off the phone with her and I problem solved with one of my buddies at work. I'm like, Hey, can you do this? And I'll do this. And then <laughs> we did that. And then I'm like, and I, I had to leave. And I just had to go deal with that thing. That was, you know, which was the emergency room. He was fine. We got to, well, my wife got to dig through dirty diapers for a couple of days to make sure he passed the screw. We have a full body x-ray of my son at a very small age with a screw in the middle of his stomach. Like, oh. okay, you know, very exciting. Yep. <laughs> but, yep. you know, <laughs> stress is going to come at you. 
And it's just yep. figuring out how you do it. Like I'm great at compartmentalizing, so I'm all in, and then I put those things to the side. But eventually, they are going to encroach in if you don't deal with them. Yeah. So how are you dealing with them? What are you doing? Why are you creating space and time to deal with them? Are you are you, at some point you you may just have to say, you know what, enough is enough. I've got to go deal with this thing, so that way it goes away, and I can get back to all the regularly scheduled programming. You know, and so sometimes you just got to take that take a half a day and yep. just say, you know what, I'm losing this and People understand. Uh, I, I am, well, have always been bad about sharing personal stories, and I've, I've worked on that and gotten better at that over time because I'm like, no one wants to hear this. But actually, they do. Mm-hmm. As a leader and a boss, people want to know that you're human. And so, you know, sharing a story like that, I was like, hey, my kid swallowed a screw and I had to go to the emergency room. No one is going to sit there and go, well, you weren't at this meeting and, and we, right. we had this. Like, they're going to be like, oh, did you take care of that? Like, and if they do sit there and go, well, you weren't at this meeting you probably should think about what you're doing at that company, but we'll, we'll leave that one on the side. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you know, people, people do relate to your stories. And so sometimes you just need to step away. And if, you know, if it's something that's constantly a problem, you need to figure out how to fix it. Cause it, it's going to start impacting your work and it's going to start impacting those relationships that you have. And, you know, it may end up, leading to a, a situation where you you don't perform well or maybe worse than that so you know you, you got to keep reevaluating i think self-evaluation and self-reflection of, of where so you're good. at is, is an important thing i love that i love it okay last question for you any advice to emerging leaders young leaders you know as they're looking to you know improve their communication in some of these high stake environments you know any you know kind of parting wisdom you'd give to them yeah, so I'm a big proponent of having a mentor. Uh, have someone that's been there. You know, if you're striving in a company to get to a certain level, go start talking to that person at that level. See if it's something you really want to do. See see what they learned. How did they do it? Your path, uh, either your path to go getting that next client, your path to getting that next promotion, or your path to you know going up in front of a group of people. It's never going to be the same as someone else's. But learn from each other. Take that feedback. How can so you good. better prepare yourself for someone that's already done it? That way, you know, you haven't been in that situation, but if you can talk to someone who has, you can learn what they were surprised by. So you won't be surprised by those things. You'll be surprised by something else. And so, you know, try to prepare for those things. Uh, talk to people about what your strengths and weaknesses are. And you don't always have to, to fix a weakness. You have to be able to work around a weakness. A lot of people will sit here and say, well, I'm terrible at this. Okay, we'll surround yourself with people that are great at that. You don't have to, you should probably try to level it up a little bit, yep. but you don't have to fix it and be the, you know, if this is your weakest point, you don't have to go be the expert in it. What are you the expert in? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And how do you offset that? So that way your strengths come out and your weaknesses don't detract. From you. So you good. Know? So good. So, okay. As we uh, wrap up a couple of rapid fire questions, uh, uh, do you have a favorite speaker? Is there someone that you just highly recommend you, every time you hear them or maybe you heard them once and it's just resonated with you for years, you love to pass that talk on. Uh, so I don't know really have a favorite speaker, but I recently went to a leadership conference, Molly Fletcher, amazing, Ooh. just the energy she brings and just the, the storytelling and just, you feel like you're a sports agent when you're sitting there with her uh, and just some of the crazy ideas and crazy things. Like she just amazed me of how she could think outside the box. And so that's, that's probably most, I, I'm, I'm pretty much a, a last in first out. Like what was the last thing? She was probably the best speaker I've had recently. Mm. I love that. She's amazing. Is there, if you're a podcast person, is there a podcast, either guilty pleasure or leadership uh, development that you just keep going back to, you love to pass on to your team members or friends? Um, so I like to listen to things that are outside of what I normally uh, my normal day-to-day business. Cause I want to learn from other industries and learn from other things. So there's Wendover productions on YouTube. I watch a lot of that stuff because they talk about different things. And now like I understand about trains and cargo ships and things like that. Uh, and then I, uh, Linus tech tips has a WAN show where they talk about all sorts of different tech things and lead- you learn from leaders that are trying to grow a company. Like it's been fun to watch him grow his company. Uh, and try to figure it out and just learn from what he is experiencing. So I, I try to find weird things that are not in my day to day that yeah. I can maybe bring back an idea from uh, into my into my day to day growth. I love it. And is there a book that 
you know, you're just like, hey, if you if you if you're gonna read one one book, this is the one you've got to read. So I'm gonna give you three. Okay. Because I wasn't gonna do one. <laughs> I love it. I just finished this. Uh, this is unreasonable hospitality. I I loved what Will did with his story. I love what he was doing as he was telling it. Uh, I just some of the leadership practices he was doing and allowing his teams and and the fact that like at the end. He was he was failing his team because he was had this attitude of no one can do it the way I do it and he had to get through that like that was awesome uh, if you're a new leader in a new role uh, the first ninety days like this is a great resource of how do you step into that new role how can you be successful and you know, you see leaders all the time they come in and they try to make changes right away that is you don't know what you don't know. You need to go figure out what you don't know. And you, if you take that first 90 days, and it doesn't have to be 90 days, I sometimes can shrink it to, we all are like, well, 90 days, I can do it 55. Fine. If you can, yep. great. But do that. And then I, this is one of my favorite books, just autobiographies from different leaders, Steve Jobs. I, just if you're trying to get in front of the stage, go look at what he did. Go watch the movie if you don't like to read the book. And just go see how did he prep for some of those Apple talks? He didn't just get up on the stage that day. He practiced it multiple times. He was very particular about the details. He knew what he was going to say and how to get himself into that moment. He knew what was supposed to happen. And then when it didn't happen, he knew enough about what he was talking about to be able to flex and move around with it. So just, you know, some of that stuff, yeah, it was fun to watch him prepare for some of these big talks and these, you know, big Apple things everybody knows steve jobs sitting up on the stage go look at how he prepped and how he oh, was I, love that. I love that these are incredible and we'll put those in the show notes along with the couple blog posts you mentioned that you wrote and caitlin these are absolutely fantastic dennis where can we send people to find out more about you connect with you uh yeah uh so dennisneal.com it's a great place to, to go you'll see some racing pictures you'll see some business things that i do uh linkedin i'd love to get to know you on there uh so those are probably the two best places to go find me. Dennis, this was incredible. Like always, every time we connect, I learn something brand new. And so I know our listeners will. I so appreciate uh, what you do and bring and look forward to grow and speak with people in the future. This is going to be great. Yeah. Thanks for having me on the show, Jason. And uh, maybe we'll do it again sometime. Thank you for listening to the Speak With People podcast, where we believe that healthy communication is the key to unlocking your leadership potential. Thank you for leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And thank you for every like and every comment. Every single time you cut and copy a link and send it to a coworker or a friend, it absolutely means the world and it helps each other transform our communication skills. Lastly, don't forget about a great resource that's available to you, our communication skills library. At the end of every episode, we ask each guest their favorite speaker, their favorite podcast, their favorite book, and we've compiled all of those resources together to give you an amazing library to continue your growth and development. Thank you again for being a listener and for being a part of the Speak With People community.